My name is Bobby Schultz. I'm a former student at the Prairie School, and I'm an undergraduate at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities, studying electrical engineering and computer science. Now I'd like to take just a few minutes today and talk about transistors. Now, I'm sure you've all heard of transistors, but what are they really? Now at the most basic level, a transistor is a switch. Not all that different from this one. Of course, it has one main difference, and that is a switch like this is controlled by a mechanical input like you, flicking it back and forth. Whereas a transistor, like this guy here, is controlled by an electrical input. Now, if you look up a transistor in any textbook, it'll tell you that it's what's called a power amplifier. Now, what this means is that you can apply a very small, low power signal, and that can switch, just like this one does, a very high power signal. For instance, a motor, or in this case, switching a light bulb on and off. Now, why do we care about this? Well, a couple of reasons. One, it's a lot easier to fit a lot of these on a board than it is to fit a lot of these on the board. But a bigger reason is that it doesn't need a mechanical input, it needs an electrical one, as I said before. Now this means that instead of a person turning something on and off, you can have a computer or a microcontroller turn it on and off, what have you. Now, as you can guess, there are many different kinds of transistors. So let's just take a minute and take a look at a few of those different examples. Now, as I said a moment ago, there are a great variety of transistors for many different applications. Here are a few examples of them. Now, here we have a, something called a Darlington transistor. Here are a few of them in a chip. A JFET and some MOSFETs. Now, we're just going to ignore these for a little bit and focus on the transistor that we're talking about today, known as the BJT, or Bipolar Junction Transistor. Now, these transistors are often referred to as, quote, common transistors. That's because they are so common. Open up just about any electronic device these days, and you'll find a few of these. Now, you'll notice each one of these has three pins. Those three pins are your base, your emitter, and your collector. Now, don't worry, we'll go over in a minute exactly what these are and what they do. Now, I have two here. That's because these kind of transistors, as everyone does, come in two types, an NPN type and a PNP type. Now, the only difference this makes is what makes them switch, whether or not it's a high signal or a low signal, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Now, let's talk about how these work and a little bit about their application, which we'll go back to later. All right, so let's get started here. So here we have um, the transistor symbols, as I was describing before. Over here, we have an N-type, which is an NPN. And over here, we have a P-type, which is a PNP. Now, um, these look very similar, but of course, there is one difference. You can see here with the PNP, the arrow is pointing inward. Over here at the NPN, the arrow is pointing outward, if you will. Now let's take a look at a, a simple circuit here, and that'll help you understand how these work. Um, let's start with the PNP over here. So we're going to have what's called a load, which is anything that's going to draw current. In this case, let's look at something that you're going to use. Let's look at a motor. All right, so we're gonna draw a motor here. That's our motor, and now of course we need voltage to run this motor. So then we're gonna put that up here. Here we're gonna have plus five volts, and that's going to drive our motor. So that's going to run into our motor, and then it's going to come out of our motor. And then it's going to go to our emitter. Um, as I described before, you have an emitter, you have a collector, you have a base. Um, and now we're going to describe what each of those do. So, of course, we have to complete this circuit. You know, we have five volts here, but it's just floating. And that's where this transistor is going to come in. So right here, where it connects with the emitter, we're going to have a voltage. That voltage, we're going to call V sub E. Now, this voltage, because we're driving with five volts, is going to be less than five volts because we have some kind of drop here through our motor. We don't know what that is, but it's not really important. It's gonna be less than five volts, but very importantly, it's going to be greater than zero volts, or ground, if you will. And that's very important because a PNP type like this is going to turn on when this, your base, which is your control, if you will, um, is low, relative to the emitter. So let's say we want our motor off right now. So we're gonna have plus five volts here. 
on our base. And what that's going to do, and then here we're going to connect our collector to ground in order to create what could be a complete circuit, but it's not right now. We apply plus five volts here to our base, and that is going to make this transistor effectively an open circuit, meaning that it's not going to be connected to ground and your motor will not run. Now, say we want to switch our motor on. We then are going to apply over here at our base, instead of plus five volts, we're going to connect this also to ground. Now that this is connected to ground, it's low relative to this, because of course ground or zero volts is going to be less than V sub E, which then means that this transistor is going to turn on and allow current from the motor to flow through it like this, thereby completing the circuit and turning your motor on. And that's how you're going to switch a PNP type. Now let's go over here and look at the NPN. Now the NPN is going to be very similar. However, it has a few different uh, attributes to it. So here we're going to draw this same type of circuit that we had over there, but it's going to be just a little different. So we're going to have that same plus five volts and we're going to have our same motor down here. And that is now going to be connected to ground like so. And then we're going to have our same voltage V sub E over here. Um, and as you notice, the emitter and collector are actually flipped on an NPN type to a PNP type. And you'll understand what that means in a second. So, on a NPN type, its operation is very similar, but just a little different. So, in this case, it's going to turn on when its base over here is greater than the emitter. So, now we have our plus 5 volts up here, and now say we want this system off. So, we're going to connect our base right here to ground, or 0 volts. So, in that case, 0 volts is obviously uh, less than your emitter, meaning that it is going to be less than or equal to your emitter because this is connected to ground as well. So this transistor now is going to be off. So you don't have any voltage applied to your motor and the motor is going to be off. Now let's say we want to turn our transistor on. So rather than connecting it to ground over here, we're going to apply plus 5 volts. Now this emitter here, this is just sort of floating, meaning that it's at some level, you know, near zero. Now when we apply plus five volts here, obviously plus five volts is going to be greater than zero, which is equal to our emitter voltage. So now that emitter voltage is around zero, and that's going to be less than this plus five volts. So that's going to cause this system to turn on. And then, of course, current in that same way is going to flow through our transistor out and down to the motor. The motor will run. So just to sort of recap, because I know that this is a lot, um, these are the conditions that will turn on your transistor. And, of course, the opposite would turn it off. So in this case, we're going to say, and then for now, we're going to call this VB. VB. Um, so for an NPN type, just kind of summarize here, for an NPN type, when VB is uh, greater than your V sub E, then your system is on and the transistor will work like a wire. Now over here for your PNP type, When V sub B is less than your emitter, sorry, your uh, V sub E, then that is the condition that your system will be on. 
So these here are the two conditions that will cause your system to be on. And those are the two important things to remember here for your NPN and for your PNP. That these can both be used interchangeably in your circuits, but of course you have to know where to place them in your circuit. Right here we have, this is the same circuit, a motor going from 5 volts to ground. And we can do this with either an NPN or a PNP, but it matters where we put it in the circuit because you need to know what the potential differences are between these different points. So I hope I haven't gone too far here, but I think that this summarizes it nicely. All you need to know is which voltage is greater, really. Um, and this is very simple when you're running it with a plus 5 volt system like you will be with a microcontroller. All right, now let's move on to how we know this about transistors. So we're going to look at a data sheet real quickly before we get on to application. All right, so here's what's called a data sheet. Now, this is going to give us a lot of information about our transistor. Now, how you find a data sheet is you're simply going to go to Google and you're going to type in the numbers and letters that are on the back of your transistor. In this case, that's this set of numbers and letters, which corresponds to the part number. Um, and right away, you'll have a sheet that looks something like this is going to come up. Now, right away, we get very important information. This is an NPN type transistor which of course tells us how we're going to use it in our circuitry. And then over here is actually a schematic of what the transistor looks like, but very importantly, you look right here, um, assigned to each pin, you see there's a flat side to it so you can determine which direction it's uh, in. You see they map out what the pins are, meaning emitter, base, and collector. Um, you'll see that right there. Now that's very important for how we're actually going to plug this into our circuitry. Now under features here, um, you know, there's uh, no, sometimes you'll see a longer list of features, but here there's one very important uh, point here, which is that it talks about the collector current that this is specified for. That's 500 milliamps, so half an amp. Now what that's saying is that this device is designed to run at a value around 500 milliamps, that that's what, you know, sort of the uh, operational level is. Um, now you'll see down here we have absolute maximum rate. Now these are some very important uh, values. Um, right here we have what's called the collector emitter voltage. So what this is is the voltage across the transistor itself. And its maximum value is 40 volts. And so if you exceed that, you're actually going to destroy the transistor. Now this isn't a very big deal for us because in most cases we're going to be limited by the fact that we're going to be using a 5 volt Arduino microcontroller to uh, switch it. However, if you have another kind of circuit set up and you're using a higher voltage, this might need to be something to be considered. Um, so what this is saying is that if you have something that requires more than 40 volts, you're going to need a different kind of transistor. Now, the next important one we have is down here, collector current. Now this is the same current that we're talking about up top at half an amp. Um, however, here you'll see the absolute maximum rating is one amp. Now, what that means is that you know, say we have a circuit driving a motor, and that motor is designed to, you know, under normal load, uh, run it around half an amp. That's just fine. But say when we're stopping and starting our car, that the current goes up. It gets in near the range of an amp. That's okay, because that's why you have ratings like this. So one amp, that's all right if you're just spiking up there, but you never want to run this continuously at one amp. There you want to look at this 500 milliamp number. Um, and if you run it above one amp, you can irreparably damage this transistor. So it's an important thing to consider. So those are your two big issues, are voltage across it and the current flowing through it, flowing in and out of the emitter and the collector at any given time. Now this is the vast majority of the information that we actually care about. However, there's a little more over on page three, so let's go there now. All right, so here we go, here's page three. Now, there's only really one thing on here that's um, at all relevant. And I just think this is sort of an interesting idea to look at. This is what's called DC current gain. This is a very important theoretical concept for a transistor. So what this is talking about is, um, you'll remember I described before that a transistor is a power amplifier. And what that means, as I said before, is that you can take a very small amount of power and use it to control or switch a very large amount of power. So say we applied 0.1 watts to our base and that switched a load of, say, one watt. That would mean that we have a DC current gain of 10. Now you'll look over here and you'll see 
for specific circumstances, what your collector current is, and then what your collector emitter voltage is, so the voltage across it and the current going through it, what your gain is in minimum value. So basically the transistor will perform at least this good under these conditions. And then over here you'll see this is its optimum operating condition. So uh, then that will give you a maximum. So the maximum that this chip can ever do is 300 as a gain, um, which is pretty good. But this is not incredibly important right now, but it will be necessarily in the future that you want to look at, you know, how one, how efficient your transistor is, and two, how much it's amplifying it. Is this a low power amplifier? Is this a high power amplifier? Does it have a very small current DC current gain value or a very high one? Um, so that may become important in the future, but something to consider. So there's going to be a lot of other information on here. Now, for right now at least, uh, it's safe to ignore that. For building basic simple circuits like we're going to be doing, this is plenty of information for you to consider and for you to be aware of when you're designing your circuit. Um, so let's move on now to actually working on some simple circuits. All right, so we've talked a lot about theory of transistors. Now let's talk a little bit about application. Here we have a couple of circuits set up. Um, and so uh, this is just a power supply, which is going to be providing voltage for our circuits. Um, so let's get this going. Now over here we've got, this is just a LED, an appropriate resistor, and a push button. Um, so we just push the push button and the LED turns on. Now this is fine for driving one LED, but say we want to drive several LEDs or a motor or something of those lines, we can't use just a push button to do that uh, because these push buttons, just like output pins on, say, an Arduino, uh, have a limit on what kind of current can flow through them. These guys are limited to right around 100 milliamps, though I wouldn't go that high with them, and the pins on the Arduino are very specifically limited to 40 milliamps. If you try to draw more than that from them, you will destroy that pin. Now, each one of these LEDs draws approximately 20 milliamps, so driving one is no problem. But Let's say over here, we've got five in parallel. Now five times 20 milliamps gives you 100 milliamps. So this is far more than a single Arduino pin could ever handle and more even than one of these push buttons can handle. So what do we do? Well, we use a transistor. Right here we have a uh, N2222, uh, which I showed you the data sheet of before. Um, we've got these five LEDs in parallel. Um, and then this is a NPN type, so we have positive voltage being applied here, going across the resistor, going to the positive side of the LED. That negative side of the LED then goes into the collector of this NPN, and the emitter goes over here to ground. Um, and then when we switch the base of this NPN transistor with this push button, that will switch the transistor on and off, allowing current to flow through it, thus completing the circuit, as we'll see here and that works just fine. Now, of course, a load is just a load. So right here, we're driving several LEDs. However, this very same circuit, meaning the whole NPN circuit, could be used exactly the same to drive, say, a motor. So let's take a look at that. All right, so we've made a quick change. We have all the same transistor circuitry. However, as you can see, instead of our bank of LEDs, we now just have this little toy motor. Um, so let's get our power supply going. So now when we uh, press the push button that will then apply positive voltage to the base of our transistor once again allowing current to flow through it and thus running the motor. And as you can see that's exactly what happens. Um, now as I said before a load is essentially the same. All that matters is how big the load is. So this circuitry is going to remain the same. All that matters is what you're switching here. Um, so these are some very simple circuits, but there's some very useful circuits. And I'm going to post the schematics for these circuits as well. Um, and I hope that some of these basic ideas have given you some insight as to actual, not just the theory of transistors, but the actual application of them.